welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Zoe but most people know me as ZA Reptiles here on YouTube and on Instagram. So today we're gonna be talking about something I get asked a lot on Instagram and I never thought to make a video about it but I get asked this question all of the time and that's which is better for a beginner a corn snake or a ball python because those always seem to be the two snakes you hear about when talking about a first snake. So in this video, we're gonna be comparing the two. We're gonna compare corn snakes and ball pythons to see which you think is the better fit for you if you're stuck between these two snakes. Now I'm not saying that these are ultimately the only beginner snakes or that these are even the best beginner snakes. All I'm saying is that these are two that are commonly thought of as the main beginner snakes. People always ask me which one's better for beginners. So we're just gonna compare the two in this video. Okay, so in this video, you will get to meet my corn snake and one of my ball pythons. So we're gonna be starting off with my corn snake, Phoenix. She is a, a male corn snake or an albino corn snake. I've had her for a couple years. And she was actually my first snake. I adopted her off of Craigslist. Um, she was already adult size, full grown. I don't think she's really grown much more since I got her, maybe a little bit. I want to say she was around two when I got her. So she might have done a little more growing, but she was pretty much at her adult size when I got her. So just to hit on both species right off the bat, these two species are non-venomous. They're typically really good when it comes to handling and their temperaments. We're going to talk about all of that today, but neither of them get really, really big. Phoenix is actually on the large side for a corn snake. So neither of them get extremely big. Um, and if they were to bite you, it really wouldn't hurt too much. Um, so we're gonna talk about a couple different uh, things when it comes to their care and we're gonna compare them um, to kind of help you decide which one's better for you. So because I already kind of touched on it, we're gonna start on their size. So the main difference between the two is that corn snakes are long and skinny, a lot like a noodle and ball pythons are very thick, very girthy. So when it comes to length, they're roughly the same. They're very similar. Um, ball pythons tend to sometimes be a little shorter than corn snakes, um, but there's a very wide range when it comes to corn snake sizes. Like I said, Phoenix here is on the really big size. The corn snake I worked with at the zoo though was 10 years old and like a third the size of Phoenix. So there's a huge, Span there. Um, corn snakes and ball pythons both typically range from three to five feet. That's a pretty good average. Uh, typically females are larger than males. So if you want a smaller snake, I would recommend trying to find out the sex or the gender of the snake before purchasing it. Uh, males tend to be a little bit smaller. So if you want a bigger snake, aim for female. If you want a smaller snake, aim for male. Again, that's no guarantee on what size it's going to end up being but it gives you kind of an estimate or a rough guess. Now corn snakes look smaller because they're a lot thinner. Um, so if you want a snake that looks bigger, ball python would be your better route because they're so girthy and thick that it makes them look bigger. So the ball python you're gonna meet after this, I would say is about the same size as Phoenix, but he's gonna look a lot bigger because he's so thick, but they're really pretty much the same length. So obviously with that being said, ball pythons are going to be a lot heavier than corn snakes. I don't get tired holding phoenix at all. Um, the ball python I worked with at the zoo was one of the biggest ball pythons I have ever seen. And I think she weighed seven, eight, nine pounds. I forget how much she weighed, but she was heavy. So when we brought her on programs or on zoo mobiles and I had to stand there with her for two hours, my arms were exhausted. I usually ended up sitting and putting her in my lap because she was so heavy. So corn snakes are also gonna be much, much lighter. So going off of size, we're gonna go into temperament because we're talking a little bit about handling. So they're both very different when it comes to handling. And this is one of the main things I talk about when people ask me which one's better. I ask them, well, which would you rather have? Something that's not gonna stop moving, that's fun to handle, or something that will just sit with you that's slow moving that you can just sit and watch TV with. That's kind of your big difference. So you can see here, Phoenix hasn't stopped moving. She's all over the place. Corn snakes have a pretty good temperament. They're pretty 
don't want to say outgoing, but they're quite, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Adventurous? Nosy? They're usually out and moving around. Um, you're going to see them quite often, at least in my experience. Um, Phoenix hides under her water dish a lot, but other than that, she's usually out exploring or she's curled up on top of her basket hide. So she's a lot of fun to watch. Um, she never stops moving, so it's really fun to handle her. Um, unless you're just trying to sit and hang out, then it's kind of a pain in the butt. But um, she's fun to handle. It was a little difficult when I first got her because she is already big. When they're smaller, if they don't stop moving, it's a little easier to handle. I had never handled a snake before, before getting Phoenix and seeing how much she moves. It was a very big learning curve for me. I really had to learn how to handle a snake while having a snake that doesn't stop moving. So I think for my first time handling a snake, a ball python would have been easier. Um, but because I had Phoenix, now it's super easy for me to handle other snakes because she's a snake that I learned on um, and she was quite challenging. <laughs> but they are pretty nice. Um, she's only ever struck at me once and it was my fault because it was the day I brought her home. Um, so of course she was scared, she was somewhere new, she'd been stuck in a plastic container for hours and I just reached in to grab her and she was freaked out so completely my fault. But other than that, she's never struck at me. The one I worked with at the zoo never struck at me. I haven't really heard anything about a mean corn snake ever. Now ball pythons, on the other hand, are notorious for being shy, hence their name ball python, because when they're scared, they ball up. And that's kind of what makes them really easy to handle, is that sometimes they'll just sit in this ball and not move. Um, now, this shy personality, sometimes has its downfalls. Sometimes being super shy can lead to aggressive behaviors. Um, sometimes they might strike. I have heard of some kind of grumpy, strikey ball pythons. Um, and that's usually coming from a place of being very shy and very scared. Um, but I found a majority of ball pythons are just shy and curl up and take a while to come out and move around. Now when they do come out and move around, they're very slow moving, so they're very easy to handle. They really don't move too much. Now the last thing I want to say about handling is with the ball pythons, um, those that are so shy that they're a little more aggressive, their bite would hurt more than a corn snake. If you look at her head, her head is pretty tiny. Um, compared to a ball python, their head is much larger, so their bite would hurt a little bit more. Um, but neither would have a really dangerous bite. With a ball python, you might get a little prick and bleed a little bit, where a corn snake might not even pierce the skin. So really, it's nothing too crazy, it's nothing super dangerous, it just might hurt a tiny bit more. You might bleed just a tiny, tiny bit um, compared to a corn snake bite. Okay, so now that we've gotten a good look at her and how she handles and her size, I'm going to put her back and we're going to grab a ball python. Alright, so this here is Kalua. He is my pretty much full grown ball python. Um, he does have a little bit of a wobble because he is a champagne um, ball python. He's a champagne paradox. He was rehomed. I did not buy him from a breeder. Um, I talked a little bit about him in my in a video, a recent video. So you guys have met him before. And as you can see, he is pretty large. Um, he might be a little bit shorter in length than Phoenix, but he is very girthy. So it makes him look pretty big. I grabbed him instead of Snicket, my other ball python, because one, he's bigger, but also because we're going to talk about the differences in feeding, and he's a good example of why ball pythons might not always be the best beginner snake when it comes to feeding. So corn snakes are great eaters. Phoenix is my best eater. She has never, ever missed a meal. Ball pythons can be a little tricky. Now granted, Snicket, my other ball python, is my second best eater right behind Phoenix. He's never missed a meal either, but I just think Phoenix still takes first. Snicket takes second. Kalua probably comes in last for my best eater out of all my snakes. Kalua is a typical ball python. So what I mean by this is it is not unusual for ball pythons to go on feeding strikes, to go off of food, and to not eat for God knows how long. Now these feeding strikes can be kind of concerning 
for a new snake owner that isn't aware of this or that doesn't quite understand that it's okay for them not to eat every week or even every two weeks that they'll be okay as long as their care is right and they're healthy it's totally fine and i understand this i have a lot of snakes my sunbeam went pretty much all winter last year without eating or two years ago when i first got her last winter she actually ate consistently but the winter before that when i first got her she didn't eat the whole winter but she was totally fine but ball pythons there's really no rhyme or reason sometimes they just decide they don't feel like eating for even a couple months and as long as you monitor their weight you make sure they're not dropping too much weight that they still look healthy and that they're acting normal that they're still shedding and whatnot it's okay however it is a little concerning Kalua concerns me he's on a feeding strike I've got him the beginning of December he's only eaten for me one time However, I'm going to try either tonight or tomorrow because the last couple nights he's been very adventurous and like adventuring around his enclosure. So I'm wondering if he maybe now is getting a little hungry. So I think I'm going to try feeding him to see if he takes it. Fingers crossed he does. But he's an example of one that does not eat very often. And he's a very shy eater too. So going after that whole shy thing. The one time he ate for me, I left the rat for him and went to bed so it's pitch black there was nothing going on in my room so another aspect of feeding is the cost it's going to be more costly overall to feed a ball python than a corn snake corn snakes can be on mice their whole life which are a lot cheaper than rats a ball python is going to need a rat Kalua here could not be sustained on mice Kalua does get a i think small rat is what i give him where phoenix gets a large adult mouse so these two snakes eat on the same schedule, or they should if he were to eat consistently, they would be on the same schedule, but his meal costs me well over a dollar a piece. Her meal costs me maybe a dollar a piece. So it is going to be more expensive to feed these guys, and it makes it hurt more when they're on a feeding strike and they refuse their food because you're thinking, dang, all of those expensive rats I'm throwing away because you're not eating them. So another difference between these two is their enclosure and their care as far as what goes on in their enclosures. So corn snakes, in my opinion, are the easiest setup for snakes. It really doesn't get any easier to care for a corn snake. They don't need high humidity. Their temperatures are really easy to achieve. Where these guys, they need higher temperatures than a corn snake and they need more humidity, which is the hardest part probably of taking care of them for new reptile parents or new snake owners is trying to achieve that humidity that they need. And as far as enclosure size goes, they could really, depending, enclosure sizes really depend on the size of the snake. So for these two guys, they could really have about the same size enclosure. So the typical rule of thumb when getting an enclosure for a snake is you want them to be able to stretch out along two sides of the enclosure. If they need to stretch out along three sides to stretch out, it's too small. They should be able to stretch out between two sides of the enclosure. My goal, rule of thumb for my enclosures, is for them to be able to stretch out along one full side so they can fully stretch out without having to bend around a corner. That is my goal length for my enclosures. Now, obviously not all of my enclosures are there at the moment, but when I have my dream reptile room and I build all my custom enclosures, that is my goal for my enclosure sizes, is to be able to have my snakes stretch out along one side. So as far as the cost of buying them, you can get them for relatively inexpensive. Um, a normal morph for a ball python and a corn snake, you can get probably between 30 and $40. Um, and then if you want a more fancy morph, they're gonna be a little more costly. Um, a fancy ball python morph could cost you anywhere from 1000 to $15,000. Um, the nice part is ball pythons do come in so many colors and patterns that there's surely a ball python out there for everyone. Corn snakes are much more limited in the colors and patterns, the morphs that are offered, but there are still some really pretty ones like Phoenix. I absolutely, I absolutely love the albino corn snakes. But you can find both species really easily on Craigslist and on Facebook, constantly being rehomed. That's where I got Kalua and Phoenix and Snicket. So my corn snake and both my ball pythons are all rehomes on um, Craigslist. 
So the last thing that I'm going to mention in this comparison is their lifespans. So obviously pretty much all snakes are really long time commitment. They all live pretty late into their teens, 20s at least, um, but there is a difference in their lifespan. So corn snakes typically live around 15 to 20 years on average. Ball pythons, if cared for properly, can live 20 to 30 years. So you're going to have a ball python a lot longer than you're going to have a corn snake. So if you don't want a snake for almost 30 years, a ball python might not be right for you. You might want to look more at a corn snake that might only live 15 years. So a corn snake could have about half the life that a ball python would have. So hopefully this video helps those of you that are trying to decide between a corn snake and a ball python that weren't quite sure what you wanted, um, that were having a little bit of difficulty deciding. Hopefully this video helps you guys out. And as always, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you for the next video.